In the following video, we're going to examine how to graph a piecewise defined function. And in this video, we're going to use the point slope approach in order to graph these. And what that means is we're going to first identify the starting point and then use the slope to find the other points from there. Now, the key for the slopes is that you're going to have to be careful of the boundary or the condition that it's for each portion of the piecewise function. So let's do the first one. We have here f of x equals x minus 2 if x is less than negative 1, or f of x equals x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we're going to graph first the function f of x equals x minus 2. So f of x equals x minus 2. And this is if x is less than negative 1. And so that is our boundary that we're going to have to be careful of. And what this does is it allows us to see our starting point. We're going to take negative 1 and we're going to plug it into our function. So f of negative 1 equals negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. And so the coordinate that we start at is negative 1, negative 3. And if we look at our boundary, since it is less than, we are going to use an open circle at that point. So I go to negative 1, negative 3, and I'm going to use my open circle. That gives us our starting point for this portion of the piecewise function. When f of x equals x minus 2, x is less than negative 1. And it's that boundary that tells us how we are to apply our slope. So when we do our slope, we look at the function. Our slope here, x minus 2 is the function. Our slope is 1. But it follows the condition x must be less than negative 1. So if we go to our x axis here, we want all the x values less than negative 1. And so I'm just going to show you that means our graph has to go in this direction. And so when we draw our line, we can't go over to the right. We're going to have to go to the left. And so what that means is if we take our slope of 1, you know, you know that means up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. But if we look, that's not in the area where our condition meets. So instead of going up one, right one, we're going to go down one, left one to follow a slope of one. Down one, left one. Down one, left one. And now I have the graph of f of x equals x minus 2 if x is less than 1. And so I'm going to draw from my starting point through those lines. And so that takes care of the first function. Now let's look at the second part of the function. The f of x equals x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So same idea. We're going to look at our boundary, our condition. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So I'm going to plug negative 1 into our function. So f of negative 1 equals negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. And so my starting point is going to be negative 1, 2. And since it's or equal to, this is going to be a closed circle at negative 1, 2. And now again, we're going to look at the slope of our function f of x equals x plus 3, so our slope here as well is 1. And what that allows us to do is we can look at our boundary. x must be greater than or equal to negative 1, so our slope needs to take us in this direction. And so now I can apply my slope of 1 in that direction. I can go here, up 1, right 1, plot a point. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. And up one, right one. And then take my line 
at the starting point and go through the rest of the points. And so this approach I refer to as the point slope approach because you identify your starting point and then when you apply your slope you have to be careful to apply it following the direction of the condition. Since x is greater than or equal to negative 1, I'm going to apply it to the right. Since here x is less than negative 1, when I do my slope of 1, I can't go up 1, right 1. I have to go down 1, left 1, because that's where the, all the lesser values are. So let's try another example. And again, this example, we will still use our point slope approach. We'll identify our starting point based off of the conditional values of x, and then use our slope in that direction. So the first function is f of x equals x plus 2 if x is less than 0. So then my starting point is going to be at the x value of 0. So when I plug in 0, f of 0 equals 0 plus 2, I get 2. And so my starting point is 0, 2. And since the boundary is less than, this is going to be an open circle. So I have an open circle at 0, 2. And now we apply our slope. Our slope in this problem, x plus 2, is 1. And so we're going to apply the slope towards the values that are less than 0. So if I were just to kind of look at it, the value is less than 0 go in this direction. So when I apply my slope of 1, I can't go up 1, right 1, because then I'm not following that conditional boundary of x values having to be less than 0. So I'm going to have to go down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1, and so on and so on, across the grid. And that's going to allow me to take and graph the line. So I take my starting point, come down through the other points, and graph my line. Let's do the other function, f of x equals x. And this is true if x is greater than or equal to 0. So again, my starting point is going to be based off of that condition, so we'll let it be 0. So f of 0 equals 0. So then my starting point is 0, 0. And because of my condition being or equal to, I know this is a closed circle. And so at 0, 0, I'm going to put my closed circle. And then I'm going to follow my slope. f of x equals x. So my slope is 1 and I'm going to follow it based off of the condition x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So those would be that direction on the graph. And so if I'm going to use my slope of 1, I'm going to go up 1, right 1 in that direction, up 1, right 1, and so on and so on across the entire graph. And then take my line from the starting point and go all the way up. And so this is the example of the point slope approach. You have to first identify your starting point, and you do that based off of plugging in the conditional value of the boundary. And then you have to use your slope. And this is the part that tricks students, is the slope part. When you do the slope, what you want to do is maybe make a little marking on which direction your boundary tells you you have to use the slope in. And the example would be, you know, x being less than 0 for this part of the piecewise function, I couldn't go up 1, right 1, because then I'm going towards the values of x that are greater than 0. I'd have to do the opposite of up 1, right 1, which would be down 1, left 1. So this approach is a little more abstract than the other technique, but you can kind of follow through the whole process um, in this video. And we'll look at one more example on how to approach these in another video.